Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. Is that what you say, tuning in? Thanks for clicking onto my channel. If you are new, my name is Hallie Everts. I know that my name looks like Haley. Blame my parents for spelling my name this way. Today's video, seriously, the sun just started shining in and ruined my lighting. Okay, hopefully that's better. So I've tried to avoid doing a ton of really churchy videos. When I first started my channel, I was talking a lot about the church, temples, just lots of things about being Mormon. It led to good things. Obviously my book came from my YouTube channel, but I felt like I wanted to make things a little bit more lighthearted, more of like a lifestyle channel. But I get a lot of questions about church things. Every time I go on Instagram Live, it's just like tons of questions about gospel and doctrine related things. I get on these rants sometimes where I'll see something on Facebook or circulating around social media about the church and it drives me nuts and I don't ever talk about it on my YouTube channel. I feel like I always get really worked up but then you know the moment passes and I just let it go. But these are things that obviously a lot of people are thinking or struggling with or whatever so I guess I just am gonna put my thoughts out into the universe and talk about it when it comes up. I saw on Facebook someone talking about how they wish that they had been rebellious. They feel like the church held them back and they missed out on the experience to drink, do drugs, mess around sexually, just like kind of be a partier. And so many people responded and said, Oh, I'm so glad I had a rebellious stage. I loved it. My husband never did and he regrets it. And I was just shocked at how many people wished they had sin. And then I saw this comment that I just couldn't bite my tongue. A woman said that when she has kids, she will send her kids off to college, make sure that they party and have fun and experience things before they get married and they won't be allowed to get married under the age of 25. They basically want to force their kids to sin and do things against church doctrine, do things against Christ's teachings because they need to experience life first. So as you know, I have a very colorful past. I've done it all. Well, I never did drugs or anything, but you know, I was in this, scene of not good things and good things came from it. I had to go through those trials and experiences and make those mistakes in order to learn things, in order to grow my testimony and in order to prepare myself for the life that I have now. Like it's obvious that that was part of God's plan for me. But if I could have still gotten to this point without making those decisions, uh, you bet your butt, I'd rather not make all those terrible decisions. So anyway, I just felt compelled to comment and say that this idea of thinking is totally wrong. That basically forcing your children to break their covenants, you know, when they're baptized or if they go on missions and go through the temple, they make covenants with God, promising to keep the commandments and do things and not do things. And as a parent, it is our job, it is our obligation to prepare our children for the world and for these sacred covenants that we make in the temple and for eternal life. Like it literally is our, our job to teach them the gospel, provide these opportunities for them to grow a testimony and set them up for a good path. So this woman is basically saying she wants to do the exact opposite. She is teaching her kids to go against church doctrine and to make poor decisions. And then people were saying like, Oh yeah, nothing bad can come of it. I mean, if you get addicted, then that's your own issue. But if you're not addicted, then there isn't a problem. Well, how can you know if you're gonna get addicted or not, for one, until you're already down that road? Two, there are a lot of things that come from drinking and doing drugs besides getting addicted. Uh, leading to harder drugs, getting roofied, drunk driving, getting arrested, DUIs, sexual assault, pregnancy, STDs. I mean, the list goes on and on of things that come from being involved in a party scene. Even if you are sober, it's still kind of a dangerous situation to be in. 
So to say that nothing bad would come from it, I just, I couldn't handle it. And honestly, I feel like it's mocking the atonement of Jesus Christ. He died for our mistakes, for our sins, for our imperfections, so that when we do make mistakes, we can overcome them. But by like planning to make mistakes, like premeditated sinning, it's totally mocking the atonement. That's not what it's for. So I, I just was so enraged. And then I've seen more things about people talking about how terrible garments make them feel and they can't wait to take them off when they are on their period because they feel sexier when they're not wearing them and it just makes their life so miserable. It's so difficult to find clothes to wear. And I hear people talking about how modesty has taught women to hate their bodies and mess up their sexual lives because it's just ingrained into their brain that sex is bad and they can't enjoy sex when they're married and people who haven't had a rebellious stage and made you know these decisions with partying and whatnot they live their life in regret and wondering and like fantasizing about what it would be like to do these things and i'm just sick of people blaming the church for their problems this woman said that the reason why the mormon divorce rate is so high is because people feel like they've been held back in their lives and then later on they decide they want to rebel and that destroys the marriage no 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 the reason why lds divorce rate is high is the same reason why every divorce rate is high it's because people are selfish if you have a desire to go off and make these mistakes and commit these sins and break your covenants it's because you're selfish you're thinking only about what would feel good what would be fun what's easy, what everyone else is doing, not thinking about the eternal perspective, what God wants, what is best for your family, what's best for your health. If you're thinking about, I don't want to wear garments because I want to feel sexy in other clothes or immodest clothes, whatever. I feel so cute in my garments. I love them. So maybe you just need to find some other styles or maybe it's because of like your body shape. Maybe you need to get in a better shape so that garments will fit you better so that you have an easier time wearing clothes. But again, garments aren't about making you feel sexy. So you're just being selfish thinking about what you want and what's gonna make you feel good. Mormons have all the same issues the rest of the world does with poor communication skills, finance, sex, children, all these things that people can't communicate with and don't know how to handle or do properly. That's what leads to divorce, not the Mormon church. If anything, the Mormon church teaches you to be equal partners and communicate with each other and forgive each other and always be striving to improve and do better and help each other and love each other and put your family first instead of, again, the selfish things of the world, only caring about yourself, only caring about improving as an individual, not as a family unit. Thinking about looking the best or having the most money, not thinking about coming closer to Christ and helping others. If a church leader, if a bishop, if a young women's president, whatever has made you feel horrible about yourself, one, it's the way you interpreted what they said, and two, people aren't perfect, people are jerks. Just because you're Mormon doesn't mean you're nice. A lot of Mormons are really judgmental jerks. So if something has happened in your encounter experience with another member of the Mormon church that has led you to have hard feelings, that doesn't come from Jesus Christ. That isn't the gospel. The gospel protects you and makes you happy. I totally understand how you know, we can be offended and we can have false things said to us, whether it's about modesty or, I don't know, your appearance. I, there are a lot of reasons people get offended. Like, this doctrine does not ruin people's lives. It doesn't destroy marriages. And I'm just so sick of people who are Mormon bashing the Mormon church. There are a lot of cultural things. If you watch my Mormon culture video, opinions people have about things that happen in Mormon culture that are really annoying or really frustrating. But that doesn't have to do with the doctrine. And I just don't understand why, if you go to church and you consider yourself a Mormon, why would you be publicly complaining about and bashing the church and like advocating for things that go against the church teachings and, and this church doctrine? I just feel such a strong like responsibility to defend the church. I don't understand every part of doctrine 100% perfectly. You know, I haven't been in all these different situations that people have, 
but I know that the doctrine and the teachings of Christ and the guidelines and principles and commandments that we have been asked and told to follow make us happy and improve our lives. So if you think the Mormon church has done something to hold you back or destroy your life or make you hate yourself or make you feel like you're a piece of crap, whatever, that's not what the gospel of Jesus Christ does. So I think the biggest way to like change these things is looking for like the positive people are just so like on a negative mindset always looking for the bad if you're looking for the bad you're gonna find it maybe asking for a second opinion asking for additional advice asking god that will help clear up some misunderstandings i I don't know there's so many different situations that people feel like the church is making them unhappy or has held them back in life or has ruined some part of their life i'm just like flabbergasted at all the things that i see of people complaining about things I, it just drives me nuts <laughs> church leaders are imperfect they say hurtful things at times church members can be rude and judgmental and offensive but we also determine how we let things affect us if we take offense to it if we let it fester within us if we choose to hold a grudge and not forgive someone or we only are looking at the negative instead of looking for the positive. It might sound like I'm being judgmental, which I kind of am to this person who's talking about how they want to raise their children to commit sin and go against church doctrine. That makes me terribly sad because as a parent who sees the way the world is going and who is trying to be like a force for good and helping others and helping my own children, like... We need to protect them and give them the strength that they need that comes from keeping the commandments and reading our scriptures and going to church and like working so hard to protect ourselves to resist temptation and make good decisions that will lead us to the temple that lead us back to God. So my only hope in sharing this stuff is that it will kind of give a new perspective. I mean, if someone wants to throw their issues at me with the things that they feel like the church has done to mess up their lives, Feel free to message me, email me, whatever, and I'd be happy to try to talk it through with you. I'm not like, you know, the end-all, know-all. I don't know. Bottom line is the church doesn't destroy your lives. The church doesn't destroy marriages. Being selfish, looking for the negative, breaking our covenants. Those are the things that lead to unhappiness. So I'm going to get off my rant. I have a lot of other topics of things to discuss in regards to modesty, in regards to members of the church and non-members dating. You guys ask me so many questions and I love it. So please follow me on Instagram. Let's have a discussion about it. You guys know I love to talk about the church. Uh, I'm going to try to find a balance between you know, the normal lifestyle videos and the church videos. Thumbs up this video if you agree with what I'm saying. If you liked it and if you like talking about the church related stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video really soon.